Hello friends, this is Reverend David from Christian Path Ministries of Pennsylvania. Welcome to the Christian Path. I hope you're well, and that today's message, the importance of wisdom, will show us not only how important wisdom really is to our spiritual lives and to our future in the God's kingdom, but also right now, as humans, being physical human people, how wisdom itself can actually save your life And how being foolish can lead to a destructive path of one problem after another. And it can even get us killed. Now, we're going to be taking wisdom scenarios from the Bible, of course, as well as from today's world. And as you know, the Bible itself is the how-to manual for being human. That's what this ministry is based on. We take the experiences of people in the Bible relate them to our own lives today so that we can grow and learn in spirit and character to walk in the footsteps of Lord Jesus, stay on the Christian path, and one day get into God's kingdom. Here's a little scenario. Let's say we're standing on a busy intersection on the corner there. We're just about ready to cross, and we look, and we see this bus coming at us at full speed. But we're in a hurry. We cross anyway. We walk right in front of the bus. Is that a smart thing to do? Now, (laughs) is that common sense or is that lack of wisdom? We're going to see here there is a difference between common sense and wisdom. Some people think it's the same thing. Actually, it's not. Let's just say we're at work. Here's another scenario. And there's a co-worker who's very attractive. This person made it very clear that they're attracted to us too. The problem here is that that person is married with kids, and so are we. So what do we do? Do we have a secret affair with this person because we're attracted to each other? Definitely not. Why? Not only is it morally wrong, but wisdom tells us that it's a bad move. We're not just talking common sense here. We're talking actual wisdom. In essence, what is the real difference between common sense and wisdom? In Webster's New World Roger Thesaurus, the two refer to each other, and they're similar, but it goes a lot deeper than that. Common sense is something that is right from the gut, and a natural instinct, more or less. Impending danger or risk will kick off the common sense factor. Animals, even insects, have a common sense, a survival instinct thing built right into them. If you try to swat a fly or kill a centipede, what's it going to do? Is it going to just sit there and wait for you to kill it? No. It's going to do everything in its power to run, jump, fly, whatever it can do to escape you, to get away. It's survival instinct. Common sense. Wisdom, on the other hand, is a learned thing. We rationalize, use intelligence and education. Now, bear in mind, sometimes smart people do stupid things, but that doesn't mean that the person is actually stupid, only that they may lack a little bit of wisdom. That person won't intentionally walk in front of the bus if they see it coming. That's common sense. But to have an affair at work when there's so many risk factors involved, when they're married, the other person's married, that is wisdom, to walk away from that. See the difference? Now, who in history was the most profound as far as having wisdom? Next to Lord Jesus himself, of course. Solomon. But think about this. Who gave him that wisdom? The Lord did. Remember, Solomon wasn't born with the profound wisdom that he had. After Solomon was made king in David's place, his biggest fear was that He wouldn't have the wisdom to rule God's people. So he actually asked the Lord for wisdom. Have a look at that. It's 1 Kings 5 through 9. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask, what shall I give you? And Solomon said, You have shown great mercy to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in truth, in righteousness, and in uprightness in heart with you. You've continued this great kindness for him, and you've given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. Now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father David, 
but I am a little child. I don't know how to go in or come out. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you've chosen, a great people, too numerous to be numbered or counted. Therefore, give your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? Now bear in mind here that Solomon could have asked for anything he wanted. Could you imagine that? Could you imagine the Lord coming to you and saying, Ask, whatever you desire, I will give you, whatever it is. Could you imagine it? What would you ask for? $50 million and a 300-year lifespan to spend it? Some people might. I don't even know what I would ask for if I was approached by the Lord and he said, Ask and I will give you anything. Now, Solomon didn't want that. He didn't want riches or a long life or revenge on his enemies. He wanted wisdom to rule and judge God's people. And the Lord was very pleased. He was very happy with what Solomon asked for. He was more concerned with being able to rule the Lord's people than things for himself. And you see the reward he got in verses 10 through 14, where it says, The speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Then God said to him, Because you have asked this thing, and have not asked a long life for yourself, or riches for yourself, or asked the life of your enemies, but you have asked for understanding, to discern justice. Behold, I have done according to your words. See, I have given you a wise and understanding heart, so that there has not been anyone like you before you, nor shall anyone like you ever arise after you. And I shall also give you what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be anyone like you among all the kings of your days. So if you walk in my ways, to keep my statutes, my commandments, as your father David walked, I will lengthen your days. So just by asking for wisdom to rule God's people, God gave him the wisdom and all these other things. He gave them a long life. He gave him riches. He gave him unbelievable rewards because he knew what Solomon's true intentions were, what he really wanted and how important it was to him to be able to rule God's people with wisdom. So just by asking for wisdom to rule God's people, God gave him all these other gifts. Remember, God is our Father, Lord Jesus is our Savior and older brother, and they love to give gifts to us, their children but they can see into our hearts. By the scripture on Solomon, what does that tell us? If we ask the Lord for something that he knows comes from the heart to better serve him and others, he will give us that, plus a lot more. For example, when I was called to the Lord in 1999, I believed that all he wanted of me, personally, was to just shine a light as a Christian and, and to try to help others, but I later found out that he had a bigger plan for me. After studying the scriptures for over 12 years, he called me to baptism in June of 2011. And after this, I just felt that he had something else in mind for me. But it was frustrating for me because I had no idea what. I had no idea what he wanted me to do or what he expected of me. And I have to admit, I was really confused. I felt I knew there was something I had to be doing, and what did I do? I actually asked the Lord. I asked him, what do you want of me? I know there's something you want me to do for you. I'm dense here. Be blunt for me, Lord. Please show me what you want me to do. Well, I'll tell you what. He answered my prayer, and he did it quick because my head was spinning. I never once thought for a second that he would call me into the ministry. It's the last thing that I ever expected. I have to admit, I was a little frightened over it, too. I'd never preached, never even thought of it, nor did I even think that I was close to being the type of person that the Lord would want, or even qualified to deliver his word. But obviously, the Lord felt differently. This is the way he wanted me to serve him. So I asked the Lord for the wisdom to deliver his word and to bring me to those that he wants to be calling as his children those that he's handpicking into his flock to serve him in some way. People that he wants right now to serve him.
but I had no idea what I was getting into here. What I'm saying is this. To please the Lord, to serve Him and be His children, we have to walk in the footsteps of Lord Jesus. And Lord Jesus and our Father are the most profound in wisdom in the entire universe. So think about this. Us, as their children, have to have wisdom too. Our ultimate goal is to enter God's kingdom. And the only way we can do it is to walk in the Lord's footsteps, live for Him, please Him, serve Him, and Father, and to walk in the footsteps of Lord Jesus. Let's face it, we need wisdom. Just think about how wise Lord Jesus was and is. And wisdom can't be inherited or bought. You can't just walk into the store and say, uh, yeah, give me um, two dozen eggs, a, a loaf of bread, and uh, four pounds of wisdom. It doesn't work that way. You have to be given wisdom by the Lord. And we can't please him without wisdom because we wouldn't even be doing the right things wisdom will guide us on doing the right things to please the lord he will provide us with that wisdom and it's so important here to seek wisdom through the scriptures and of course to ask the lord to open our minds and our hearts to fully understand what we read when we're reading the scriptures and to follow the instructions that he gives us he teaches us in Proverbs, through the words of Solomon, how to live a godly life in an ungodly world. He covers how to deal with today's issues, be it parenting, government, adultery, any issue that could lead us astray, Solomon covers for us to learn from. And remember, it's coming indirectly from the Lord when we read that stuff, because he gave Solomon that wisdom. Now, the value of wisdom, let's think about that. What is that? How valuable is it? Let's take a look in Proverbs 2, verses 1 through 9, where it says, where Solomon is saying here, My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He's a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the paths of justice and preserves the ways of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice. So what exactly is Solomon saying here? to look for wisdom and understanding more than a hidden treasure. Because not only will these assets keep you on the right path to the Lord and to his kingdom, they'll help us think as the Lord does. And this is what he expects from us, his children, to follow in his footsteps. And to do it, we have to know how the Lord thinks. The Lord has wisdom for us. All we have to do is seek. All we have to do is ask him for it. Wisdom comes with righteousness. Now, how important is wisdom? Let's look at Proverbs 4, verses 5 through 13. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget, nor turn away the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, and she'll preserve you. Love her, and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she will promote you. She'll bring you honor when you embrace her. She will place on your head an ornament of grace, a ground of glory she will deliver to you. So you see here how close understanding and wisdom are? They go hand in hand. Solomon is saying here that get wisdom, get understanding, and never forsake them, and they'll preserve you, keep you, and bring you honor. Remember, the more wisdom and understanding that you retain, the more you'll think like the Lord wants you to think. You'll think like him. In Proverbs 8, rather than just talking about it, Solomon actually gives wisdom her own voice. And did you notice too, Solomon refers to wisdom as her and she, not as it or that or the. Did you notice that? He refers to it as a woman. Have a look at verses 12 through 21, where he gives wisdom her own voice. 
where wisdom is actually speaking to us. She says, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogance, and the evil way and the perverse mouth I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me, kings reign and rulers decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, all the judges of the earth. I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently will find me. Riches and honor are with me, enduring riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold. Yes, fine gold. And my revenue, better than choice silver. I traverse the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of justice, that I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth, that I may fill their treasuries. So here, wisdom is actually telling us who she is, what she can do, and where she came from. And if we love her, she'll love us in return and give us wealth in the Lord's kingdom, where it really counts. And as we move on to verses 22 through 31, wisdom's actually telling us how long she's existed, how long she's been around, and more importantly, where she originally came from. Have a look at that. It says, The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I have been established from everlasting, from the beginning, before there was ever an earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I was brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, or the fields, or the primal dust of the world, when he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit so that the waters would not transgress his command, when he marked out the fountains of the earth. Then I was beside him as a master craftsman, and I was his daily delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and my delight was with the sons of men. Wisdom has been around since the earth was created. So we see that when the Lord began creation, wisdom was right there with him. He used wisdom in all that he created, all that he did. Every decision the Lord made, from the sea to the mountains, all the way to creating us, his children. So we see why wisdom is so important to the Lord. God the Father and Lord Jesus are so profound in wisdom so it stands to reason that they want us to also have it. Our Father and our Lord and Savior both want us to have wisdom so we can be like them. Think about it. Doesn't a parent want their children to be like them? To look like them, act like them, have the values that they have, the morals they have? Of course, they want their children to have the, the attributes that they have. That's why they raise them a certain way. Well, God the Father and Lord Jesus are the same way. They are profound in wisdom, and they want us to have it too. Every aspect of life situations and how to use wisdom is addressed in the Bible. In Proverbs, a lot of them are shortened to the point, but to get the points across, for example, they are direct. Now, let's look real quick at Proverbs 28.1. The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. What does that mean? If you stay righteous, you don't have to be afraid of anything or anyone, and you don't have to run because you did nothing wrong. You can be bold because you are guiltless, faultless. But if you're wicked, you're always afraid of something. Now let's look at chapters 29, verse 20. Do you see a man hasty in his words? There is more hope for a fool than for him. Now, what does that mean? In this day and age, it's called putting one's foot in one's mouth. What he's saying here is, don't be hasty. Think before you talk, because if you say something you shouldn't, something inappropriate, something stupid, you can say you're sorry, but you cannot take it back. Once it's said, it's said. So he's saying, don't be hasty in your words. Think before you speak. Now, chapter 15, verse 1 Solomon saying, a soft answer turns away wrath, 
but a harsh word stirs up anger. Now, did you ever deal with someone who's irate from the start? I've worked in retail in the past, and you can have a person approach you. They are angry before they even get to you. And as soon as they approach, they're already raising their voice. They're angry about something. How do you do? What do you do to calm the person down? How do you handle this situation? Do you get nasty in return? Do you get an attitude and call him an idiot? No. The more you feed into his anger, the more it's going to escalate and it goes back and forth and gets out of control. You're giving fuel to the fire. If you speak softly and you are really nice to the person and even sort of agree in a way and say, hey, look, I know what you're talking about. I can help you here. Look, we'll handle it. Don't worry about it. Don't... The, you see how fast you will diffuse that situation. That's what he's talking about. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Now, chapter 12, verse 26. The righteous should choose his friends carefully, for the way of the wicked leads to them astray. Now, what does he mean by that? Did you ever hear, show me your company and I'll tell you what you are? My grandma used to say that to me all the time. What it means is you tend to hang around and associate with people of like mind, people who have the same interests, desires, priorities. So if a Christian is hanging out with a sinful person of the world, there's something radically wrong there. And people will see that and they'll say, wait a minute, this person's a Christian. Why are they hanging out with people who are known troublemakers or known problems, known sinners? So choose your friends carefully. Now remember that Solomon was a sage in his time. He was the wisest man in the world at that time. But he also did slip up. He had a lot of wives. They had their own pagan gods. And somehow they persuaded him to build altars to their gods and to worship them. That's not a wise thing to do. You know, that always blew me away because I couldn't understand with all of Solomon's wisdom and knowing how jealous the Lord is and that knowing that the Lord is the only God, why he gave in to his wives. Did, 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 what did they do? Did they play cutesy? I don't know. But somehow they got him to do that and it was not a wise thing for him to do. Another good thing to look at here is don't let pride overshadow wisdom. When you get a chance, take a look at Esther too. There's a lot of examples there in Esther where pride overshadows wisdom. Now if you get a chance, take a look at that. Just read the entire book of Esther where we have Queen Vashti who made a really bad mistake. Her pride overshadowed her wisdom and she was thrown out of the kingdom and dethroned. She was basically a nobody after that. Also, Haman was another one. He was so self-indulgent with pride that he wanted a whole race killed. He wanted all of the Jewish people killed because one person, Mordecai, would not bow down and worship him. Now, when you read that, you'll see what happened to him. He wound up getting hung from his own gallows because of his lack of wisdom. So, we see here that wisdom is a very important priority that we need to keep in our lives. It's given to us by the Lord when he gives us the Holy Spirit. Guess what? Wisdom and understanding comes with it because we know that the Holy Spirit is the Lord's power. All during Lord Jesus' ministry, he shows us wisdom. Remember all the times the Pharisees, the scribes, all these people tried to trip the Lord Jesus up with these bizarre questions and trying to make him look foolish in front of the crowds to discredit him. What did he do? Lord Jesus had profound wisdom and he flipped it around and made complete idiots out of the Pharisees in front of everybody. He also knew what they were and knew what they were about. He could see into their hearts and told them what they were in front of everyone, that they were liars and hypocrites and brood of vipers. They did not like this. We see how wisdom is so important when it comes to even daily life here. Not only 
in the kingdom, in spiritual form, as we're growing in spirit, we're growing in wisdom, we have to learn it here in physical form. So there's no way that we can be on the Christian path, walking in the Lord's footsteps, on our way to the kingdom, pleasing and serving the Lord, if we don't have wisdom. That's how important wisdom is to us, and it's imperative. It's very, very important to the Lord. And it's important to the Lord that we have it. We have to have this wisdom ingrained in us all the time so that we can think as the Lord does, walk in his footsteps, and be on the Christian path. And once we repent and we're baptized, we are on that Christian path. Now, I don't mean being baptized into any specific denomination or religion. Just being baptized in the name of Lord Jesus. When that happens, the Lord sends us the helper. He promised us that. That's the Holy Spirit. It's God's power. It comes with the wisdom. So we have to be baptized, repent, accept Lord Jesus as our Savior. He will send us the Holy Spirit and the wisdom. And we have to ask him constantly for more wisdom to please him and serve others. And I'm not saying here that being on the Christian path, as you probably already know, it's not an easy trip to make. We are not like the world. We're not like everyone else. Let's face it, we're zeroed in on We're targeted. People think we're strange, we're odd, we're weirdos, we're fanatics, whatever word you want to use. We know it's not an easy path. The persecution is there. But remember, we're not on the path alone. We have the Lord. We have the Holy Spirit, we have the Bible, and we have each other. And of course we have the power of prayer. That's always there. The Lord is there for us. Now, if you need me for anything, don't hesitate to contact me. All my contact information is right on my website. That's www.mychristianpath.net, www.mychristianpath.net. You can get all my contact information there. And also, all the messages I've done so far are right there on the site. You can listen to them from the site. You can download them. Or if you'd like a CD or DVD, just let me know. I'd be happy to send you one absolutely free of charge. What I'm saying here, brethren, is as we walk down the Christian path, we follow in the Lord's footsteps. It's imperative to make sure that we keep our Bibles right by our sides, read scriptures every day, keep our prayer lines open. Keep your faith strong and make sure you always ask the Lord for wisdom. Don't jump the gun on anything. Don't make any harsh or rash decisions without thinking. Ask for the Lord's wisdom to be just like him so that we can stay in the Lord's path and one day get into God's kingdom. This is Reverend David. Thank you for joining me for The Christian Path. Until next time, goodbye friends.